Hello, students. Welcome to Statics. I'm Dr. Stewart. Today, we're going to do an example for the method of sections. This is an example 6.5 coming from Hibbler's Statics book. This example asks us to determine the forces in members GE, GC, and BC of the truss that's shown. And we're to indicate if those members are in tension or compression. Let's start this problem by zooming in on the truss that we're given and evaluating what are, what are the things that are known and what are the things that are unknown. Just right off the bat, we can see that we have dimensions for this truss, a lot of dimensional information. And from that, we can figure out some angles uh, within, within the structure if we need them, right? We also are given two external loading uh, 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 loadings on the truss, one at point E and one at point C. And then some, some other information that we know is that we're going to have a pin support at A and a roller support, support at D. So based on that, we can kind of, uh, um, replacing those supports with their reactions, we can kind of get an idea of some, some unknowns that we have, AX, uh, AY, and DY uh, uh, in that truss. Now let's go ahead and uh, uh, take the truss and create a free body diagram where we free the body from its constraint and replace those constraints at A and D with the reactions AX, AY, and DY. Now with that information, um, let's also go back to our problem statement and note that we're asked to find the forces in these three members so we'll go ahead and say that the force in GE, the force in GC, and the force in BC, that those are also unknowns. Now, if we are looking at our free body diagram, we can highlight that GE is here, GC is here, and BC is here. And so if we were to, to try to find a path that cuts through all three of those, we could simply draw a line, a squiggly line there. That would be a section line, a place we would probably want to section our structure, right? And that's going to be useful for later. Now, before we section the body and take either the left-hand side or the right-hand side, it's important for us to find the value of AX, AY, and DY, to find the support reactions. So let's go ahead and take the full free body diagram and create equations of equilibrium for this full free body diagram. So let's go ahead and do, I say the sum of the forces in the X direction, that'll give us directly AX equaling 400 Newtons, we can do the sum of the moments about point A, which will give us a, a, a nice and simple equation. And we can rearrange and solve then for dy, which is equal to 900 newtons. And then we can also do the sum of the forces in the y direction. And that'll, once we rearrange, uh, provide us with a value of Ay, which is equal to 300 newtons. So now we have um, all of our support reactions. We know that information, and now we're ready to apply the method of sections. Now, when applying the method of sections, we can choose either side of the section line that we draw. So we drew this line in the uh, we drew this uh, line here in the middle. We could take the left hand side 
or the right hand side. Because we are assuming that there is equilibrium in the entire structure, equilibrium will also exist in each half, the left hand side or the right hand side. So either one of those choices will give us the exact same final answers, right? So the choice that we make between the two is usually based on which one will give us easier equations to solve, which one is going to be a little easier to work with, right? So in this case, we are going to go with the left-hand side of this uh, free body diagram. And so that, in essence here, this is the squiggly line, and we have drawn the left-hand side of it, and we're going to try to establish equilibrium. Now, by sectioning the body, we expose the forces that are transmitted either in tension or compression through these members. We actually expose those internal forces. The challenge that we have is in figuring out what sense do those forces have? Are they in tension? Are they in compression? Are we pushing or pulling, right? The best way to do it is to use inspection, to actually think through, inspect through the equations of equilibrium. And from that, you'll be able to tease out if something needs to be in tension or compression. So here, we've kind of already teased it out. So let's go through the procedure of inspection. Uh, let's think about the sum of the forces in the y direction. And let's note that we already know the value of AY. AY has a magnitude. We need to maintain equilibrium. So we need something that is going to give us a negative direction of force. We need a negative uh, force in the Y direction to counteract this positive Y direction force at AY. So where could we do that? We have three members here. A member here, a member there, a member there. Which one of these is going to give us, could we get some negative Y direction? I, I hope all of you are, are thinking what I'm thinking. It's this member here. This member must have a load going downwards so that we can counteract, we can maintain equilibrium with that AY term, right? So that's that first case. Through inspection, we figured that out. Let's do another case. The, the next one, we, we, a point we identified, is this point G. It, say we wanted to take the moment about point G. So we're going to pivot about this point, right? Well, we know that since these two members here, since their line of actions go through point G, they won't cause a moment, right? So the only thing that could cause a moment, if we're doing a moment about point G, that, that we don't know, the only unknown, is going to be the force in BC, right? Now let's look at the two forces we do know. We know AX and we know AY, and combined, they are going to cause a, 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 a clockwise sense of rotation, right? That's what they're going to do we're going to need something that's going to cause a counterclockwise sense of rotation. And that is going to indicate that the force BC needs to be going towards the right so we can have a counteracting moment. Inspection, simple as that. All right, so we figured that one out. Now let's do one more. Uh, let's do the moments about point C. So let's say, let's say that we wanted to find the moments about this point C here. What is causing rotation about this point? Well, right off the bat, we can notice the line of action of several of these go through point C and they will not cause a moment, right? We also know that the one thing that we could control is the force in this member, uh, I think this is member GE, right? The force in this member. And the known that we have 
is we know that AY is going to cause a clockwise sense of rotation. So the only way we can counteract it is if the force in this member GE is going in to G, right? Simple as that. This is the inspection method where we're applying um, the equations of equilibrium or the, the, the equilibrium equations in order to uh, figure out what senses we need. We're not drawing the equations themselves, but we're just using it logically to get, to get these directions, okay? Now, we did this inspection method. It works well. We've, we've, we figured it out. This is going to give us the right answers. Our final answers are going to have the correct senses already predefined, right? But this inspection method is challenging. It's not for everybody. So another option that we can take is that we can assume that all the mem members are in tension. We can just make that as an initial assumption. So we say a pro in our problem at the beginning, the assumption made is that the members are in tension. We do that. And then through solving our equations of equilibrium, we will find out if the members were in tension or if they were in compression by if they're positive or negative, right? Perfectly fine, as long as we are certain that we know what sense we're in. Can we say tension in the member or compression? Then we're good, right? So we've applied this inspection method. We figured out the three equations. Let's go ahead and use those exact three equations. Let's start with the moment about point G. Um, we can find the forces that are involved in their moment arms as well as their senses. And in this particular equation, the only unknown is FBC. We rearrange and solve. We'll find that FBC is equal to 800 Newtons in tension. We do the next one, uh, the moment about point C. And we're going to do all of the forces and their moment arms involves as, in, as well as their senses. And the only unknown is FGE. We find that equal to 800 Newton's compression. And then our last one is the sum of the forces in the y direction. Uh, we find there's only one unknown in that equation. It's the force in member GC. And that force ends up being 500 Newton's in tension. And so we've been able to successfully apply the method of sections. We started with evaluating our diagram, identifying our knowns and unknowns, and crafting a free body diagram. Then we solved for the magnitude of those support reactions. Afterward, we, choose, we chose a section, left-hand side or right-hand side, and applied inspection to figure out what are the senses of the forces in the members. And then using those same inspected equa uh, uh, expected equations, we actually solved for the forces in the members. And so we're done. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Please consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on alerts. There's more examples on the way.